In this presentation, I'm going to discuss the binary number system and how it's used in computer networking. I'll discuss how computers use binary numbers, how we count in binary numbers, the first eight powers of two, how to convert binary to decimal numbers, and how to convert decimal numbers to binary numbers. Computers communicate with each other using electrical pulses. And this is like a light switch where the pulse is either on or off. And it works really well with the binary number system because the binary number system only has two values, zero and one. And different combinations of zeros and ones are going to represent different numbers and letters. In computer networking, we're going to group binary digits into groups of eight, or sometimes we'll refer to them as octets. And computers often communicate with each other using IP addresses. And an IP address, when we look at it as a human, we see the decimal form that's written as four decimal digits in dotted decimal notation. So we'll take the four values, separate them with periods, but what the computer is really seeing is the binary equivalent to each of these four decimal numbers. Each of the octets has eight binary digits, and the entire IP address is made up of 32 bits Grouped into groups, into, grouped into four octets. And if we have an octet with all binary ones, that's going to have the decimal value of 255. So each decimal value will only range from zero to 255. And when we are converting binary digits or decimal to binary, we're going to look at digits in groups of eight we're not really concerned with converting decimal values greater than 255. Another thing you can notice here is for the decimal value 10, we're going to use all eight positions in the binary representation. So when we have smaller numbers, we're gonna precede those numbers with zeros so that every number is represented with eight binary digits. So let's start with reviewing the decimal number system and how it works. Decimal number system is also called the base 10 system because it has 10 unique symbols, zero through nine. And we really don't think about what happens when we're counting in the decimal number system, but what do we do when we get to number nine and we want to count? We don't have any more symbols, so we're going to add a digit in front of the nine or add a new place value, and the nine will become a zero, so that nine becomes one zero, or what we refer to as 10. If we have multiple nines, we continue doing the same thing. 99 can become 100, so the two nines become zeros, and we've added a one to the leftmost position. And then 599, we don't need to add another place value, because we can increment the five to a six and then change the nines to zeros. So this is all pretty intuitive to us because we do it so often in the decimal number system and the binary number system works the same way. The difference here is in the binary number system, we only have two unique symbols, zero and one. So we're gonna be adding new place values quickly. So to count in base two, it's gonna work the same way as with base 10. When the rightmost digit is a one, we're gonna change it to a zero and increment the preceding value so that a one becomes one zero, one zero becomes one one, one zero one becomes one one zero. And I've written out the first 10 decimal values on the right and their binary equivalents. So you can see that pattern. 
where we change the zero to a one each time. And then, if necessary, we'll add another place value. Now decimal seven is equivalent to binary one, one, one. So what will we need to do to make eight? The one, one, one will become one, zero, zero, zero. We're just following the same pattern. And then nine would become one, zero, zero, one. We would continue so forth and so on. And again, with the computer networking, we're really concerned with the first eight binary digits. Now, one thing that will help us do conversions between the two number systems, binary and decimal, will to understand our powers of two. I've written out the first eight powers of two, and it's very helpful to memorize this. So I wrote out a chart here, starting on the right-hand side with two to the zero power. And in any number system, two to the zero power is gonna be equivalent to a one. Now you probably know that two to the first power is just a two, and two squared is four. Two cubed, that one's not too hard either, that's equivalent to eight. But beyond that, you may not have these others memorized. But what we're really doing each time is we are doubling the preceding number. So that one times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32. When we double that, we get 64, double it again, we get 128. So we're going to use this chart when we do our conversions, where we've written out the first eight powers of two. That's two to the zero power through two to the seventh power. Now, when you're working with subnetting and computer networking, it can be helpful to know the next three powers of two. And that would be two to the eighth, ninth, and tenth power. What's really neat about two to the tenth power is the decimal equivalent starts with a ten. So I think that one's pretty easy to memorize. Two to the tenth is 1024. So let's see what we can do with this. I want to now convert a binary number to a decimal number. And what I'm going to do is use that chart that I have, and I'm gonna write my binary digits into a new line in the chart and all I have to do to get the decimal value is add up each power of two that has a one for its binary digit. Let's see an example here. I want to convert binary one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I've written out the eight binary digits into the eight columns of the chart below each power of two. Now I want to look at which power of twos have a binary one in their column? And in this example, that's 128, 64, eight, and two. To get the decimal equivalent of this binary number, now all I have to do is add up the circled numbers. So when I do, I'll add 128 plus 64 plus eight and two, and I'll get decimal 202. So converting a number from binary to decimal is really very simple when we use a chart like this. We're gonna use the same chart to convert a decimal value to a binary value. It's a little more complicated because we have to do some comparison with each column one at a time. So this is the overall idea of what we're going to do, and then we'll look at an example. I want to compare my target that I am trying to convert to the power of two on the left-hand side. So I'm going to start with that two to the seventh power equivalent to 128. I'm going to compare what I'm trying to convert to the 128. And if what I am trying to, if that power of two, 128, is less than or equal to my target, then I'll put a one in that position and subtract that power of two from my target because I've used up that value. 
Otherwise, we'll put a zero in that position, and then we'll move on to the next column. We'll do each column one by one. So let's see an actual example. I think that will make all of this make a whole lot more sense. I want to convert decimal 148 to a binary value. So I'm going to start in the leftmost column of my chart. And I want to look at the power of 2, 2 to the 7th, which is 128. And I want to see, is 128 less than or equal to my target, 148? Yes, it is. So I'm going to put a 1 under 2 to the 7th. And my new target is going to be 148 minus 128 because we used up 128 of the value. Now we have a target of 20, and we're going to use 20 as our target that we compare to the next column. Now I'll go to the 2 to the 6th column. Is 64 less than or equal to 20? No, it is not. So I'll put a 0 under 2 to the 6th. We'll move on to the next column. 2 to the 5th power. Is 32 less than or equal to 20? No, it is not. So again, I'll put a 0 in that column and move on to the next column. 2 to the 4th power. Is 16 less than or equal to 20? Yes, it is. So I'm going to put a 1 in that column. I've used up 16 of my target, so I'll subtract it from 20, and my new target will be 4. So we move on to 2 to the 3rd, and we ask, is 8 less than or equal to 4? It is not. We'll put a 0 in that column. And then, is 4 or 2 squared less than or equal to 4? Well, in this case, that's equivalent to my target. I'm going to put a 1 under 2 squared. I've used up my entire target. 4 minus 4 is 0, so I have nothing left to compare. And I'm going to put a 0 in the remaining places. So now I've completed my conversion. 148 is equivalent to binary 1010100. And to check myself, I can add up those values again. So I can take the 128 plus 16 plus 4. And if I were to add those three decimal values, I would again get 148, which is the number I started with. And that just proves that I got the correct answer. So this, going from decimal to binary, takes a little more practice than binary to decimal. But it's just a matter of getting used to doing the comparisons as you go across the chart. So if you want to do some practice with binary conversions, a fun way to practice this is with Cisco's binary game. This is a game where they're going to test you on doing conversions both directions. And you'll use your Packet Tracer software login to access this site. Here you can see from the instructions two examples of what they have in the game. They present decimal puzzles and binary puzzles. And this works like a standard video game where you'll have puzzles to solve uh, under a certain time period. And as you complete levels, the higher levels give you less time to solve each of the puzzles. So you'll be solving both decimal and binary puzzles for the decimal ones they will have the binary numbers written out on the left-hand side, and you'll type in the value that corresponds. In this case, this binary number is equivalent to decimal 8, so I would type in 8 where the question mark is. Or you could be completing binary puzzles where they've given you the decimal value on the right-hand side, and you're going to change the zeros and ones as needed to create that same value. So here, with it being decimal 4, I would change this third 0 right here, third from the right to a 1, and this 1 to a 0. And once I complete any of these puzzles, then that line will then clear off the screen. And I'll have to complete the puzzles within a certain time period in order to complete that level. So 
So in summary, we saw how computers communicate with binary numbers and see IP addresses in binary. Things that you need to know are the first eight powers of two, how to convert decimal numbers to binary, and how to convert binary numbers to decimal. And I will conclude with a little joke. Sometimes you'll see this on t-shirts and things like that. But it says there are one zero types of people in the world. Now it looks like decimal 10, but it's really meant to be a binary number. Binary one zero, of course, is equivalent to decimal two. So what we're really saying is there are two types of people in this world, those who understand binary and those who do not. If you want to see uh, some additional videos to, on binary numbers and other base systems, here are a couple that I recommended that you can watch just for some additional explanation. And here is a list of references that I used in producing this presentation.